Hey everybody, this is CJ at Lip and Lure. Gunner's behind me working on a uh, hand carved bait. We're going to start with a rainbow trout, tip number two. Um, I'm going to take a picture of a bait that I found on Google and try and recreate some of it. We're not going to do an exact replica because exact replicas are a lot harder. You need better guns, more control. I just don't have that control just yet. But we're going to start with a white base coat and we're going to layer on some pearlized white to give that nice um, silvery white belly effect that trout have. There is a big trout fishing community out here in Springfield. Everybody's complaining right now that the the trout stamp and the trout taxes and everything's gone up but it's to support the fishery, so I'm not complaining. Right now, I'm heat setting in between colors. A good heat set allows you to layer on more color. You get a better effect. The white bait coat, the base coat, is just to set in the colors a little better. You don't necessarily have to do it but it helps. And if you do want a tutorial on how to clean and properly dismantle your guns for your airbrush guns and stuff, just let us know in the comments. We will do a tutorial video on that if you want it. But if you don't want it and you don't really care, we don't have to do it. We will actually listen and read the comments of you guys so we can get a better understanding of what you want to see. Right. All right, this is what we got right here. This is a pearlized white. It's, like I said earlier, it's going to give it that nice shimmer effect that I want to see in a, a, a trout bait. Now, I'm not sure if this color is going to work in our area, but you know what? It's worth a shot. There's a lot of trout around here. I said always remember to heat set in between your colors it's very important especially if you're trying to get a layered effect or you want a color to be more predominant or predominant and pronounced it helps especially with the pearlized because they're kind of translucent at a certain point And from time to time, you'll probably hear the air compressor kick on. We'll try to it happens. Out. We're going to try and keep that noise to a minimum. Now I'm switching over to a mixed green, the custom mixed green. We took our base green and white and mixed them, or blacks or browns or whatever we do. And that's how we end up with more variety from what we have. We don't necessarily have to stick to the base colors. We can mix our own. I mean, it's a whole a huge process, and it's it's actually quite fun to do. Yeah, I wasn't even showing that one. Sorry, guys. Okay, now on to our center stripe. Got that nice pink stripe down the side. And we use our own custom cut stencils. We've tried other stencils and we didn't like them as much. They didn't turn out the way we liked. Now, one thing to remember when you're doing a stencil, you want to wipe one side, the side you just sprayed on, because you will transfer paint to the other side and that's going to ruin your bait. And what we use to cut out our stencils is cardstock. Um, I was collecting comic books at one point and then I bought a bunch of card stock, uh, card car stock to back the comic books so they would stay stiffer a lot longer. 
and I got out of collecting comic books, and I have I have all that stuff to spare. Why am I trying to heat set? I'm not trying to heat set. I'm trying to paint. <laughs> and keep in mind, this is really hard to duplicate from side to side. It's really difficult to see. But I'm working with what I got. I'm doing the best I can do with it. Now I'm going to heat set the pink so I don't smear it. It's also another good thing to get in the habit of heat setting it so you don't smear it and ruin your whole bait. Because it's really upsetting when you get the paint perfect and you have to redo it. And if you make mistakes, generally you can either fix them or leave them. I leave them because, it adds, in my opinion, it adds a little bit of character to the bait itself. And what I'm about to do is add some detail yellow okra to this for the fin colors because it's got like a um, trout have like a a real tannish brown color, but not quite. There's a lot of orange and yellow tones to it, and I think this burnt oh, this detail yellow okra is going to come out better than just like a plain old white brown. It's going to add a little more depth to the bait. But I have to clean my gun to do that. Okay, so we're going to set up this stencil so we can actually get it in there and get spraying with it. Ooh, this one comes out nice. Oh yeah, it's, it's very thin. Well, the trick is like I said always remember to uh, wipe your stencil if you do not wipe you will smear and if you smear you will ruin your bait and have to start over lining it up is the tricky part from one side to the other. Oh, I just did that wrong. Mm. That's what you call a mistake, because I shot the same same side on one side as the other side. I didn't flip it like I was supposed to. Like I just told you to. But again, we're human. We make mistakes. I don't have to work for now. Let's see what we can do with the tail end. When you don't have a tail to work with, what we usually do is just spritz a little of that color on the back end. It, it helps bring the whole thing together because you're still following the same color pattern all the way through. That's really hot. You shouldn't touch the end of your heat gun when it's sitting on the, on the table. After, just after you use it, it's pretty warm. Don't do as I do, learn from me. Now what I'm doing is setting up to set the dots into play. Gunner had a good idea earlier about using your old faithful Q-tip to put dots on the bait. And Q-tips are handy as I don't know what. As can be. Um, what I was also going to suggest um, is to, instead of dipping the cotton in, take the break it in half and use the broken stem part of it. I'll just cut it off? Yeah. And so you have a smaller, considering it's a smaller bait, you have a smaller you know, surface area that you dot it with. But you do want it to be pretty flat. 
Just a little dab of paint, just like that. We're going to put little dots all over it of all different shapes and sizes. Now, I'm not doing this in any kind of discernible pattern because no two trout are going to come out the same. They're going to have different patterns, they're going to have different dots. Everything is going to be unique to that specific fish. And if you do see us talking to the ground, there are three puppies in here. This big one in specific. What? Well, if you're sending the lure, he, he thinks I'm sending him a toy. Now, see what I just saw, comparing this to that, is this has a little bit of that yellowish brown color over top. And all I'm going to do is hit it real lightly, just to bring that color into, into light a little bit. See, that gave it more of a trout color like I like. Now it's time for the eyes. Let's see what color this trout's eyes are. Oh, I wish I had those peepers. Which one? Uh, pink? No, it's it's a light brown, but it's got a it's like a teardrop shape. I don't have teardrop shaped ones. It's gold. I'm gonna go with the gold ones. These eyes are really difficult to get on, by the way. Sometimes when you're installing eyes, it takes a minute to figure out, especially if you have multiple eyes in the same bag, it takes a second to figure out which eyes actually fit which bait. Unfortunately, I don't have any this uh, fit this size in a gold color. But we're working with what we got, and that's what she turned out. Not bad. I think I can get the, the dot perfection down a little better before I tackle another one of these. But we'll see what, we'll see what goes on with it. The clear coat process is a whole other beast in itself. We're probably not going to be clear coating on camera for a little bit. And that'll wrap up this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe comment hit that notification bell it helps it helps you it helps us it helps you stay up to date don't forget our instagram and our facebook page and this will probably turn up for sale on the instagram page at some point we don't charge a whole lot for them they're custom painted lures we see a lot of them out there but we're charging about 10 bucks to start for our base price and then if you want something like super fantastic craziness it might get a little more expensive, but who knows? We do custom we do custom work. That's what we're here to do. Our handcrafted lures like this one will be a bit more as well. Those are custom orders. Um, but these ones that we just we paint and make our own are gonna be good for us. Yep. And everybody enjoy your night. Have a good night.